The headlines scream the news. Legendary investor Warren Buffett to buy Clayton Homes. Jim Clayton may have been a household name to East Tennesseans, but why did one of the greatest investment minds offer nearly $2 billion for his East Tennessee-based manufactured home business? Well, he'd read Clayton's recent book, First to Dream. Mr. Buffett was impressed with the man who had started with one mobile home and became the nation's largest producer and seller of manufactured homes, a business that could boast 30 consecutive years of increased profits. This remarkable achievement was the result of half a century of hard work and determination. Like all great things, it began with a single seed, or in this case, packages of them. My first business entrepreneurial selling opportunity was flower seed as a six-year-old kid and I just loved it so I went from farm to farm in the spring selling flower seeds and I was hooked I love selling love making money making a few dollars led to Jim Clayton's first investment decision he could buy a toy with his profits or reinvest the money in buying more seeds he chose the seeds that decision to grow the business would serve this McNary County son of a sharecropper well in the years ahead. Uh, and there was only two or three ways to get out of the uh, cotton patch, sharecroppers. Go to Pontiac, Detroit and build cars. Go to the, join the military. Uh, or I, I, I played the guitar and I thought maybe I could do it like Eddie Arnold. After finishing high school, Clayton moved to Memphis. There he attended Memphis State, sold vacuum cleaners, and played his guitar in honky-tonks. Clayton transferred to the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, where he earned a degree in engineering. During his college years, he received a radio broadcast engineer's license, opened a small used car lot, and began a weekly television show featuring local talent, including himself. Cord and saying, See Jim Clayton on the Clinton Highway. And so one of them said, I double dog dare you to do it. And so I did the, the commercial just, just that way. The combination of television and car sales worked well for Jim Clayton. At Clayton Motors. Even when a local bank forced him into bankruptcy by calling in his loans, Jim and his younger brother Joe picked themselves up and went right back in the car business on the same lot. Then Jim Clayton made a discovery. He could sell mobile homes and make a lot more money. Hey, good looking, what you got cooking? Hi, I'm Jim Clayton. His television show had already made Jim Clayton an East Tennessee celebrity. And here he was right in the middle of the country's prime market for mobile homes. We knew that when we put the little pretty little 10 year old girl who came with her grandmother and her aunt and her mother and dad and, and brothers and sisters to audition and won the audition, got the invitation to be on the show, we knew that her Sunday school class, and her class at school and all the cousins and, and friends were going to be watching our show. Soon, Clayton was manufacturing as well as selling mobile homes. He developed a strategy called vertical integration. The company built the homes, sold them, insured them, financed the sale, and provided communities where the homes could be parked. Clayton Homes grew to encompass 20 manufacturing plants and hundreds of dealers. Through the years, he stuck with the plan he developed as a boy. Keep growing the business. Uh, I would have people call on me uh, uh, for, at first, it was just the kids for the high school annual or bake sale or little stuff, but then if we got a little bit more visibility, then we, we, had, then we had the larger char charities. And when the symphony called or, uh, or the, the church came, we'd, we'd have to say no because we, growing in the business, you never have any cash. I told myself that I won't be saying no to Powell High School after we get some, make some money. 
By the time the company went public in 1983, Clayton was able to start making up for lost time. The Clayton Charitable Foundation, headed by Jim and his wife Kay, has donated millions of dollars to museums, colleges, and hospitals across the state. We've been so blessed in our lives, and so it's not really an option that we wouldn't give back. Um, as long as I've known Jim, it, giving back, it, that's just part of our lives. And I hope that we, that hope that we have made a difference and I hope we will continue to for many years. In 1991, Jim Clayton received a Horatio Alger Award, sharing the honor that year with Colin Powell and other esteemed individuals. Always following his plan, he'd handed down the reins of the company to son Kevin by the time Warren Buffett came to call. Clayton then devoted his energy into transforming a small troubled bank into a regional powerhouse called Bank First before merging it with PB&T. His current holding, Clayton Bank and Trust, funnels all his earnings into a charitable foundation to benefit the community. An experienced pilot, Jim Clayton says his life and career have been a little bumpy, but it's been a good ride. A ride that propelled a poor sharecropper's son into one of the world's most successful and richest men. I think any of us that grew up during the the Depression, or soon after the Depression, and then in starting into business and having a business failure at a very young age, then those memories are embedded so deeply into your psychic that you are likely to be afraid of being poor again or, or being without or not meet, being able to meet your obligations to uh, all the people you're uh, responsible to. And, and that never quite leaves you even when you do have some money in the bank and do have a home and a car and maybe an airplane or two and all those things. You, you don't, you just, you just don't forget so it becomes part of you. It started with a young boy, a package of seeds, and a desire to watch his business grow. 